afternoon and welcome to real talk with tamara as you guys come into the room please do hit the like button so if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel i hope that you guys are doing okay on this evening i know that i am i always express the importance of hitting the like button because the like button helps to keep the video in the algorithm okay so like share subscribe comment all of those great things okay I want you guys to know how much I appreciate you so much as we continuously go up, okay? All of my old subscribers, all of my new subscribers, all of my future subscribers, okay? I give you gratitude before you even come up in here, okay? Because I already know you're coming, okay? Because I pray for quality subscribers and uh, that's far what I, that's what I've been getting. Uh, the trolls that we get are not my subscribers, <laughs> They ain't subscribe. They hate us. Okay. So they don't, you know, they just come in to troll. But anyways, I wanted to talk about um what I saw on um I wanted to pull it up. Actually, I'm going to insert it. Okay. The ATF, the Shelby County District Attorney, the feds, uh, they they out there, okay? They've seized weapons, and it was an interesting conference that they had because uh, they're saying that, you know, they're, they partnered, but we know that they have been partnered, right? They've been out there getting guns off of the streets. And Chief Davis said something very interesting at the end, and so did um, um, Attorney Mulroy, right? Now, Attorney Mulroy, I was I was just kind of looking at him, trying to read him, child, because I know he don't be wanting criminals to get locked up. And he seemed real fidgety when them federal entities was letting him know that uh, you're going to get locked up. When Chief Davis was saying you was going to get locked up, Mr. Mulroy was kind of looking like I got to go along with the script. But y'all know I had be just wanting criminals to be out for some reason, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video and I want you all to watch this all the way through. I broke the news about three weeks ago. If you, you know, I want you guys to, if you don't have um, my, um, if you don't, if you're not a member, please do go into the members. Okay. Cause I've been, I've been putting quite a bit of stuff in there and I got more stuff that I'm going to put in there also. And I know people say, okay, because we're going to back started with a book club. Well, you're supposed to be able to say something every day. Uh, well, uh, you know, I don't tell lies. Okay. If y'all want to just go in there and talk every day, we could do that. But if you're wanting exclusive information, if you wanted some correct information, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to compromise my integrity just to be able to uh, lie to you and finish you. I, I, I feel like enough, you know, that's been happening enough. Right. But when we, I got some good information, it's going to go in. It's it's going into the platinum. Right. It is. OK. But I I told y'all that some stuff was in the atmosphere and some things were coming. I put that uh, weeks ago in my um, members, some things that I had heard. Right. OK. But what I want to do is I want you guys to watch this all the way through. Okay, I want you guys to watch this all the way through, okay? This is a problem with many causes, and there will need to be many solutions. The federal government has an important role to play in tackling this problem. One way we do it is by vigorously enforcing federal firearms laws. It's something my team works hard on every day, working hand-in-hand -hand with all of these partners behind me. Today, I would like to announce the results of an important violent crime reduction operation carried out in Memphis and Shelby County over the past several months. For months, law enforcement officials investigated illegal firearm and drug crimes at various locations in Memphis and Shelby County. The ATF led this operation, and they were assisted by other partners who are represented here. This was a data-driven operation. The ATF used data from various sources to identify areas with a high density of firearm-related crime. And then law enforcement moved to clamp down on illegal firearms trafficking use and possession, as well as, well as the associated uh, distribution of illegal drugs. One of the lo locations targeted was the Save-A-Stop 2 store at Lamar and Kimball in Memphis. 
due to the excessive illegal activity at and around that store. The district attorney's office obtained a court order to shut down the store. The district attorney general will speak more about that in a moment. We are announcing here today nine federal indictments charging 21 individuals in this district with federal crimes. These charges stemmed from this extensive targeted and sustained effort. As part of this investigation, federal agents purchased or seized 91 firearms, six of which were outfitted with illegal machine gun conversion devices or switches designed to convert a firearm to a fully automatic weapon. Officers also purchased or seized almost two kilograms of methamphetamine, 332 grams of powder cocaine, 210 grams of powder fentanyl, almost 65 grams of crack cocaine, almost 3,000 fentanyl pills, and almost 800 MDMA pills. Indictments and complaints were recently unsealed in federal court associated with this investigation. We are distributing materials today with further details, but I'd like to highlight just a few of these cases. In one case, two defendants were charged with engaging in the business of dealing firearms without a federal firearms license and for being felons in possession of a firearm. One of those defendants was also charged with distribution of drugs and possessing firearms in furtherance of a drug crime. In another case, three, def three defendants were indicted together on drug distribution charges. Two were charged as felons in possession of firearms and for possessing firearms in furtherance of a drug crime. One was also charged with illegal possession of machine guns and with possessing a firearm in furtherance of a drug crime. And one of those was also charged with using a premises for the purpose of manufacturing or distributing drugs. And in yet another case, seven defendants were indicted together. Four were charged with being felons in possession of firearms. Four were charged with distribution of narcotics. And two were charged with possession of machine gun conversion devices. One of those was also charged with carrying a firearm during and in relation to a drug crime. I think those examples show the breadth and depth of the criminal activity that was uncovered by law enforcement. Of course, defendants charged with a crime are innocent until proven guilty. Again, I want to thank our law enforcement partners for their hard work. I think this operation shows that all of us are working together to tackle the serious challenges we face. You'll hear more from the ATF about the operation in a moment. I also want to thank, as I said, the District Attorney General's office. They took an important action regarding a place of business that, uh, that was at the center of much of this activity. I'll close by saying that as the Chief Federal Law Enforcement Officer in this district, I want people to know that we are working together to aggressively prosecute people for illegal gun crimes, including gun trafficking, as well as selling illegal drugs. This investigation continues, so do others in and around Memphis. We have more cases like these in the pipeline. We're going to continue to take these cases federal, and people need to understand that anyone engaged in these actions may face federal consequences. Now a couple of our partners would like to say a few words. First, I will invite Special Agent in Charge Marcus Watson with ATF to the podium. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. Today's announcement, <clears throat> excuse me, today's announcement is a result of the hard work of the women and men of the Memphis ATF, the Memphis Police Department, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, and our other federal and local state partners. This case relied heavily on technology, specifically crime gun intelligence, or CGI. CGI was used to pinpoint where ATF should focus its resources and towards whom ATF should focus its resources. Through innovative use of CGI, coupled with old school police work, 91 firearms, including several machine gun conversion devices, were recovered from the streets of Memphis. A significant number of violent individuals are under federal indictment for violation of the federal firearms laws and narcotics laws. And one corner in Memphis is safer today and no longer is a source of illegally trafficked firearms and narcotics. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to call District Attorney General Steve Mulroy to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Ritz. Good morning, everybody. 
This is a great example of the effectiveness that we can achieve when multiple agencies work together in collaboration, in this case federal agencies and local agencies. Thanks to the great work of uh, ATF agents over a four-month investigation and supplemented by the regular work that uh, the MPD did uh, in responding to, to calls and investigating crimes, law enforcement provided our office abundant evidence of numerous repeated continuing violations of the law, guns, drugs, in some cases violent incidents that occurred in and around a particular location, the Save a Stop store that you just heard U.S. Attorney Ritz talk about, including in some instances violations of the law by employees and the owners of the store itself, accumulating to the point where it was basically a breeding ground for crime which degraded the quality of life of the neighborhood residents and threatened their safety. And thanks to that abundant evidence that we got from law enforcement, our office was able to go to court, bring a nuisance action, and close down the store, thus shutting down that breeding ground for crime. And in part of that nuisance action, um, we had a number of people, some of whom are, are, are here, people from my office I want to commend, Paul Hagerman, uh, who supervised the action, Forrest Edwards, an ADA who unfortunately couldn't be here today, and then also the cooperation of um, Marin Blakely, who is also here today, and she is an employee of the uh, Memphis City Attorney's Office, and she is embedded with our office and regularly works on these cases. It's another example of the kind of cooperation among agencies that made this whole thing so very effective. As a result of the nuisance action, like I said, the store has been shut down. Uh, we recently went back into court and agreed to reopen it or allow it to be reopened for the limited purpose of having eviction proceedings. Uh, it is our hope that that store will be run in the future by law-abiding management who discourage illegal activity rather than fostering it and who um, serve the community rather than preying on it. Now obviously, as the U.S. Attorney already correctly said, people are presumed innocent until proven guilty. But we believe that uh, what we're doing today, or what we already did, addresses a concern about neighborhood safety. And I want to commend and thank the U.S. Attorney's Office for taking the next step in bringing those indictments to the people who were most involved. And I want to commend also uh, the ATF and all the other partners. Uh, it's my hope that this is not the last time that we will do this. We did our part. The U.S. Attorney is doing his. It's my hope that there will be further collaboration in the future as we all work together collaboratively to make Memphis safer. Thank you. Thanks for all, Roy. That's my hope as well. I'd, I'd next I'd like to invite uh, Chief Davis to the podium. Thank you, and good morning. The nuisance action and the arrest of these 21 individuals for firearms trafficking, illegal drugs, and other related offenses is only one example of our collaborative and relentless efforts to reduce violent crime in our city. The dedicated men and women of the Memphis Police Department are grateful for the continued support of U.S. Attorney Kevin Ritz and his amazing team of investigators and prosecutors as we work together to answer the clarion call from our citizens for a safer Memphis. The law enforcement and criminal justice community represented here today have made a joint commitment to pool our resources together to bring bad actors to justice. This is only the beginning of our no-nonsense approach to dealing with those who perpetrate gun violence throughout our city. We know that federal charges bring about stiffer penalties for the most egregious offenses. To those who continue to terrorize our neighborhoods, businesses, and threaten the quality of life of our citizens, we have a message for you. Federal prosecution means if you do the crime, you will do the time. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Davis. I appreciate those words from our partners and my team in the U.S. Attorney's Office is going to continue to work these and work, work with these and other partners to make our streets safer. I want to reiterate that citizens are encouraged to uh, report uh, information about illegal activity to law enforcement on the federal side. You can call 1-800-ATF-GUNS or go to the ATF or FBI websites to report federal crimes. Those are the 
end of our prepared remarks. We are at this time prepared to take a few questions. Uh, Julia Baker is with the Daily Mosean. Um, that store that was shut down, how long has it been shut down and how has that impacted the crime levels in that area? Well, it's been too soon to actually do measurements of the effect of the crime in the area. We hope that it, we're very confident that it will in fact help because it was such a breeding ground for crime. It was a few weeks ago, um, like a week before last, I think, when we shut it down. We were last in court on this matter on October 10th for an initial setting. That was when we talked about agreeing to reopen it for the limited purposes of uh, eviction. And our next uh, court date on this matter will be November 14th. And you know, Steve Warren, can you talk about a breakdown, just how much time and resources is placed for all of you all? Sure. Um, you know, my, my understanding is that the ATF did an extensive um, investigation of this particular store for over four months. Um, and, you know, they uncovered evidence of uh, 30 different gun violations and six different drug violations. At the same time, uh, the Memphis Police Department was routinely taking reports all the time for uh, events that occurred, criminal violations, including aggravated assault instances at the location. And um, I mean, that was ongoing for you know the last year or so while we uh, compiled information about it. And our office, I think, you know, probably worked on it for a few weeks or about that. You know, preparing the, analyzing the evidence, making sure that we had the legal grounds for a nuisance action, which we clearly do, um, and then preparing the necessary documents to go into. And I just want to add, uh, again, we had partnerships with the United States Marshals who are represented here, uh, Homeland Security Investigations, and the Shelby County Sheriff's Office as well. I did not mean to leave them out. No, no, no. I appreciate that. No, 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 you didn't. Good morning, David. Action News 5. You know, 91 um, guns, that is a lie, though. You know, we still have these smashing grabs at these gun stores quite often. What do you tell these folks that said more needs to be done? Well, I think what, what I would tell them is to look at the uh, really important announcement that we're making today. And look at this partnership. I mean, what we have here today are federal, state, local law enforcement, and state and federal prosecutors working hand in hand. And I think everyone up here would agree that it's going to take all of us together to tackle these issues, in particular uh, gun violence on our streets. And so we're here to say that we're ready to, we're, we're up to the challenge and we're working on it. Um, I had a question about kind of the tech that the ATF has been using um, and that data. Uh, where did that really concentrate around in Memphis and Shelby County? Um, and then are there also more buildings uh, and businesses that you guys are looking to close down as nuisance buildings? Well, I'll speak to the first part of the question. So as it relates to the technology, uh, it's called uh, the NIPA. We call it NIPA internally, but it's the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network. What it is is basically a fingerprint for guns, and we take all shell cases that are recovered and go into this big database. And then you do an analysis where are the guns coming from, what type of guns are, are there. You overlay that with the Memphis Police Department down in, uh, for hot spots, and it kind of jumps off the map to you and says, hey, that's where you should be putting your resources. I got a great team here in Memphis, they work night and day. Uh, we knew that uh, if we did something very targeted, very focused, uh, we kind of morphed into a super group. And those guys absolutely knocked it out of the park. So the technology told us where we should go and who we should be targeting. Um, so the next location will be what the data says. And of those guns, uh, do you know how many of them were stolen or were gotten through uh, some sort of uh, larceny or robbery uh, of the people that were arrested? You know, I don't have that breakdown in front of me, but uh, right behind you is public information officer uh, Mason. I'm sure we'll that information for you. But I will also agree with Kevin and the Chief that obviously there's a firearm problem throughout the country. Uh, smashing grabs, stolen out of cars, stolen in robberies, traded for the drug trade. Uh, so there's no limit to the uh, amount of firearms that are available to criminal element. So it takes a collective effort from the gun, uh, legal gun owners, from the gun stores, and then for the law enforcement to enforce the laws that are on the books. Maybe one more. Um, I guess the, what he was asking, are there other stores that y'all are cracking down on for nuisances? I, I think what we would say and are prepared to say today, Julia, is that the investigation is ongoing um, and we will go where the facts lead us. Uh, we, we may have further announcements down the road and if and when we do, we will uh, make those at that time. And, and I can just add, yes, we have other 
nuisance action investigations that are underway in our office. You know, some of them not in conjunction with any other office, but we will announce those at the appropriate time. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you all being here. Thank you. Okay, so you all saw that. I know that was a uh, kind of a long video, but I wanted for you all to see everything. And if you notice, I don't know if Chief Davis was taking a dig at um, Steve Mulroy, but she did say you all heard that your federal prosecution, you will be federal, pro you will be prosecuted federally. And then she said, meaning if you do the crime, you're going to do the time. She let them know it ain't like state. It ain't like some of the stuff that's going on in Steve Morrow's office where you're going to be getting off. You're going to walk the streets. Them federal prosecutors was there. The federal entities, the ATF, the FBI, um, the marshals were there. They letting you know we are here together. And they it said we still have other nuisance situations that we are doing which means that they are still out there undercover and uh when when they're finished okay you're gonna see them again okay and steve Mulroy, he looked kind of funny okay uh hey you know you really you have people you know that feel like especially when they're in when they are not lawmakers but law enforcers that you know criminals if they're going to do these things and spend all this money criminals need to be in jail steve Mulroy is not over the federal prosecutors okay he's not over the federal prosecutors um so yeah you know um hey you know, I'm, 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 I'm glad they out there. That's the only thing that I can say. Uh, businesses are being shut down. Now, Steve Mulroy, his people were a part of that. Okay. And he explained that they only opened it back up. Cause I think he got some flack with that. So I heard him explain, we only opened it back up so that they could be evicted, allow them to open it back up so that those people that was running that business could be evicted. Okay. So you ain't going to be able to run no drug house about of your business no more um hey they are people are complaining people are, are moving really flat foot see i'm gonna tell you something memphis is 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 pretty big okay i know nashville is bigger than memphis but memphis might be the second biggest city in tennessee so what people are doing is they're just moving over the state line OK, so it's a lot of money being lost because folks are selling their houses and getting the hell out of Dodge. OK, and so, um, hey, people are uh, people are complaining. As I was saying before, a lot of people are complaining. And so, you know, you could tell Steve Mulroy, look, he, he, he looked like the I don't know. He just looked lonely standing up there. OK, I saw Anthony Buckner up there. Anthony is going to be the next sheriff. Okay, uh, Anthony is a nice guy. He's a real nice guy. Um, and so, um, yeah. And I'm happy to see it because this is what it's going to take for, for people to see, for these criminals to see that when you go out here and you commit these crimes, you're not going to get out. And I think the feds are letting them know, uh, uh, we, we're, we're not playing with you. So whether Steve Mulroy is involved or not, hey, feds come in, we're going to prosecute you federally. Okay? We're going to prosecute you federally, which means you're going to go over there to that federal building. Okay? And you ain't getting out. Okay? And you ain't getting out. Right? So, yeah. Um, oh, and um, I, Chief Davis, if I'm not mistaken, she did say... You know, that they, I think she said they have some more uh, things that they're working on. Steve Mulroy said that they are working on some things as it relates to um, uh, some nuisance indictments and things of that nature. That is not in conjunction um, with um, the federal. Um, he could have just been saying that, child, because who would know if the if the if the feds and nobody else is involved with his but his office, who would know? You know, but hey, I, I want to see Steve do well, you know, um, hopefully, because like I said before, Steve was a law professor and of course he's a lawyer. He's a licensed lawyer, but he's a law professor where as he um, what's the word that I'm looking for? 
he uh he he taught a lot of the lawyers that the people that are now lawyers but he's never tried a case you know he's never tried a case you know so um you know I, hey that's the reason why you see him in the courtroom with Paul Hagerman um quite a bit right cuz he's sitting in there and I'm sure he's trying to 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 he's got to learn a whole lot as it relates to the DA's office, and DA's office, and it's and it's and it's good, but he's gonna be there eight years. So for eight years, we cannot take him just letting people go free, right? And so it makes me happy to know that the federal entities are out there, and they still they're still out there doing undercover things in conjunction with the Memphis Police Department, the Sheriff's Office. It almost seems like they've gone metro. Like before, you know, I'm all for Metro. I think it should come back. But with the way that they're working, that's how it kind of seems, you know. And when they were Metro, that's when you were getting, I'm talking about the Sheriff's Office and the PD. But that's when you were getting quite a bit of results when their gang unit, their narcotics unit um, was all Metro. But now you got the federal entities, which is something that I said that I did like about Chief Davis, right? So when people were saying, you know, uh, with the Young Dolph's case, Young Dolph's case ain't federal, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, um, if the if the police department asks the federal, the feds, if, even if it's not federal at this time to get involved to help them, they always say they do not get involved unless if it's not federal, unless the unless the, the local agency asks them to get involved and then they get involved. And that is one of the things that I do like about her. Is that, you know, with a lot of other police chiefs, you know, more, more police chiefs are men. It's male dominated. For some reason, they have this pride where they don't want the FBI to get involved. They will not ask them. If it's not federal, they don't really want them to get involved. And when it is federal, they really don't care to work with them. Because they feel like, you know, the FBI, I think they have a hierarchy over them. They're very secretive about what they have going on and they don't tell them. I'm telling you what I know because I used to see when things were federal, when I was working in felony response, how those investigators and those agents would be getting into it, you know, um, and then they would, the investigators would complain about how secretive the FBI was and they were supposed to be working together, but they didn't necessarily tell them anything. That's because they're used to do being secretive with their investigations until their findings. And then they would go boom and the uh, investigators would say, well, if they had just told us that this could have changed the nature of, of, of how we did this, this and that, you know, and all of that type of stuff. So with her, uh, I am happy that she does not have this pride where she's saying, well, you know, we're we're our own agencies. We're we're totally equipped to handle this, this and that, because without them, I don't believe that they would have almost a million. Right. And they working with all of them different entities. She's working with all of them different entities on that young dog's case that you see up there. OK, so, hey, they outside. I, I had been saying that I had heard some stuff was going down in November. I said that some weeks back. I'm talking about as it relates to the young dog situation. So, um, yeah. Hey, um, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, but I just wanted you guys to see that. Um, it makes me happy to know that they're cleaning up. And I can't say, well, this is a, a publicity situation because um, it's election season. Election season is over. OK, so they understand with all of these murders and people are consistently complaining, folks losing their children, all of these weapons on the street. Uh, they understand that they have a job to do. Right. They have a job to do. And hey. I'm glad. Okay. But anyways, you guys, I want you guys to please like, share, and subscribe. If you would like to support the channel, you could definitely support the channel via cash app. And listen, I know people be getting mad at me because they say she just love them police to see. She just love them law enforcement officers. I do. Because I understand that we cannot live in a lawless society. Look at what is happening now. You know, uh, people want to complain about what the authorities are not doing. But then when they start doing it, they have an issue with it because a lot of them are criminals. People want to be able to go and and R.A.P.E. your children and your wife and your husband because they, they, they when they go up in the house now. They 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 getting down with the husband. These thugs are some of them. OK. And um, the, I'm talking about they R.A.P. They are 
your husband. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the R word, your husband. Okay? And so you have to hide your husbands and your sons now from the so-called thugs, okay? Um, they want to be able to put your, your daughters in human trafficking. They want to be able to burglarize your house and all of that. And then there are no consequences. They want to be able to write bad checks and uh, steal your identity and uh, just do all types of things to violate you. And um, uh, they think they can, you know, and then there, there are no consequences. So uh, I kind of watch people like that when when they just hate the police so much and they want to group all of them together. So, so usually people that are involved in uh, all types of illegal situations. OK, they got a background and stuff like that. Right. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, when the police is wrong, uh, the police have to be dealt with. You know, I don't want any crooked police officers or law enforcement officers, regardless to what agency they are on, on any department. So I feel like the ones that are like that, they need to go. But we already know everybody ain't the same. Right. And then the ones that are doing the best that they can do, working, doing their best, putting their lives on the line for these damn violators and criminals to be put in jail. OK, um, or when they do, you know, when these violators um, just can't control their sadistic behavior um, and the person that they're violating have to go ahead and take them out. It is the law enforcement officers that vindicate that person. OK, so, uh, yeah, we need the good ones. Praise God. We need some. OK, and then I'm tired of seeing these young men lose their lives. You know, all of this stuff is about about nothing. Talking about my turf, my gang, my gang side. It's a bunch of shit. Okay. And so these kids have to be taught better, you know, and it's not the law enforcement officer's job to teach them better. It has to start within their household. If it starts within their household, then they won't have to worry about the law enforcement officers. And when they write, then there can be something done about it when they are violated by law enforcement officers unjustly, right? But when you're wrong, who's going to listen to you? Folks be wronger than two left legs, then want to run to the folks and, and get mad when they know, when they're building a case on them for falsifying <laughs> information, okay? Because um, the, the, the law is not built to, uh, it ain't supposed to be, to just protect criminals because they have sadistic behavior and obsessions and they want to kill and rob and steal and all of that. It's not. It is designed to protect the people on the other side of that, right? But anyway, shout out to those those um, agents and those law enforcement officers that are out there trying to make the streets safer. They, they, they risk not going back home to their families. I recognize them and I salute them. Okay, y'all know, cause y'all know, I, cause I love the police. Okay, and the FBI too. I love the FBI too. They become my favorite. Okay, but anyways, you guys, I want you guys to please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to support the channel. You could definitely support the channel via Cash App. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.